All right, let's go ahead and create a shader that'll make our sprite blink. All right, so to go on with this, just like the previous videos, I just have a node 2D with a sprite attached to it. And we're gonna head over to the inspector on our right hand side and just gonna create a new shader. And I'm gonna call my, I'm just gonna call it blink. So blink.gd shader. It is a canvas item, of course, because it's going on a 2D object. And I'll hit create. Now back on the inspector, I'll open it up, just click on it, or you can double click on the GD shader file inside of the file system. Either way, we'll get our uh, little code editor, I guess you can call it, down here for shaders. Okay, so we got a shader type, canvas item. And just like before, this line tells the computer that we're creating a special type of code called a shader that works with 2D objects such as our sprite here. We then are going to have a couple uh, variables, you could call them. They're called uh, uniforms. And the only one we're going to need uh, specifically for this is going to be a uniform that is a bloat. And we can call it blink speed. And I'll give it a default value of 1.0 and our line with a semicolon because this is GLSL and you'll notice inside your inspector on the right hand side under a section called shader parameters you now have one called blink speed. All right next up we have this void fragment section that has a pair of curly braces and inside of those braces is where our code goes and void fragment is the start of this new code block here which is basically going to tell the computer what to do with every pixel inside of this uh, 2D object. In our case, the sprite. I'm just going to delete the comments out of there. And this is where we go. We're going to go ahead and we're going to have a vector 4, so a vec 4. And if you don't know what a vec 4 is, I do have a video that explains that a bit more. And this vec 4 is just going to be color and we're going to set that equal to the texture and pass in texture and uv and what this is uh, doing this line is it's basically going to get the color of our current pixel in the sprite so it's going to get our sprites current colors right for all the all of our pixels as we go through so you can kind of think of it as like picking up a dot of paint from a picture Right, so if we were to zoom in on our sprite, we're going through, we're gonna grab this one, and we'll grab this one, and we'll grab this one. Every time we go through it, right? So we're doing this to every single individual pixel. All right, uh, next we're gonna have the actual blinking that we're gonna calculate here. And this is gonna be a float. We'll just call it blink. And this we set to the sign now, if you, depending on how old you are, the math you've gone through, um, you may have heard of sine, cosine, and tangent. I think tangent is the word for it. I could be off on that. I don't know. To me, that just sounds weird. Um, but we're going to be using, getting the sine. And what this is going to give us, um, ultimately, this line uh, that we're doing here, we're going to get sine, time. Uh, and multiply that by our blink speeds so that uh, we can, we're basically going to be blinking here from this one line. Uh, and uh, what this line is doing is it's calculating a special blinking, uh, it's calculating our blink effect that is based on time and the blink speed that we said earlier. Uh, and it uses a special math function called sine to create a wave-like pattern that goes up and down. And that's gonna be result in our fade, right? Of going, fading in and out constantly. Now, if we, our object is faded out because of, because of the blinking, 
This is a result of the Alpha channel. If you've looked at uh, the PNG video where I explained to you that uh, PNGs, even though you remove the background, they still have a background. That background is just essentially transparent uh, on that image. But it does still exist. Um, this is kind of like what we're doing here, where we're just modifying that alpha value in of our sprite. So, we can be setting the color, but we only want the, sorry, the dot A. Right, because we want the alpha channel of that. So remember, color is from our vector 4 here that we're using. So our current color, and we just want to pick the alpha channel. So our current color is alpha, and we're going to multiply equals that, so times equals, which is just saying our current alpha is equal to our current alpha times whatever is on the right-hand side here. And what's on that right-hand side is going to be ABS, and pass in our blink, which is going to be the absolute. This line changes the, is ultimately going to change our transparency or the see-throughness uh, of each pixel by multiplying the current transparency, the alpha that we're getting there. Uh, sorry about this. So the, uh, so let's see where we, uh, the line changes the transparency or see-throughness of the pixel by multiplying the current transparency, which is that alpha value that we're getting there, color A, uh, just that transparency value of the pixel uh, and we're multiplying that by the absolute value of our blinking effect and we make the pixel fade and this making the pixel fade in and out over time so on line eight here so i just need to put my semicolon in there to get rid of that error and let's see what have i did oh i don't have my semicolon up here there we go on line nine that's what i was missing uh, so we can see here on uh line nine when we're creating our Float blink. This is creating uh, our blinking effect, and then line 11 is we're basically applying uh, each stage of that effect. Now the last thing for us to do is to modify the color of our sprite with uh, this new color that we've created, which this new color is just um, our current color with the alpha value that's been changed. So we just Access color equals color. And as soon as I hit save, there you go. We can see the blinking starts happening in there. Now, of course, you can come in here. You can now just modify in the parameters. So we can go from one to, uh, we can say 10, hit enter, and it's going to be a lot faster. I'll change it back down to one. And likewise, you can go down to something super slow, maybe like 0.2. And it's going to slow down. So now you can just modify this number and that's going to control how quick it is uh, blinking ultimately. Now, what if you want this to blink sometimes, but not always, and you want to be able to control that? Well, I'm going to show you a way that we can actually use an if statement inside of shader code to make this happen. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, kind of create myself a toggle in the shader parameters that way uh, in code. Uh, I could access the shader and just tweak this one value of it at some point. So I'm just going to create a uniform. It's going to be a bool because we want it to be a tick box. And I'll just call this blink toggle. And that'll be equal to false by default. And now if we look on the right in our shader parameters, we now have a little tick box here. So we can turn it on and off. And what we're going to do is after we We've got the color, and we could put all of this under, it doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is just control the blinking portion. So I'm going to say if, and we have to use open close parentheses here, because this is VLSL, it's going to be similar to that of C sharp. So I'm going to say if, open close parentheses, and inside of these parentheses, I'll say blink toggle. So if this is true, I'm going to open my curly brace there. And then you could do it right after color A. If you wanted to, that's fine. Just have a closing curly brace and save it. And now you'll see our sprite remains normal, perfectly fine. And as soon as we take this on, we have our blinking effect active. 
So you could use, this is how we can use uh, if statements inside of our shader code. So if you want to have uh, maybe one shader, but have different options that can be toggled on and off, uh, for example, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Now I'm just going to throw uh, a little bit of a code in here so we can see like uh, how we can maybe have multiple things going on with uh, one option here. So I'm going to start by just creating a couple more uniforms at the top. All right, so going step by step here with you guys, uh, I've gone ahead and I've just added a few variables here. Uh, two for tweaking two colors. And then I have one for the amplitude and frequency that I can play with. And let's move on to the next section. I'll show you what I'm doing with those. Right, so I've added in uh, these three lines here. 14 through 16 and this is just two floats and changing the RGB uh, values of our color since we're already tweaking the A uh, with our blink. And what we're basically doing here is we're creating this pulsating effect between uh, two colors. And our pulsates here again we're using uh, sine and using time multiplied by our frequency times the amplitude which again are two more numbers that you can uh, tweak and play around with. Uh, they get different effects or tweak the effect a little bit in different ways. Uh, for example, if I change this 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 and nothing else, uh, we can see that's changing a lot quicker versus uh, if we had something like 0 0.1 and we go in, that's going to be much, much slower. And that's just tweaking with the amplitude. amplitude. We then have something like frequency that we could tweak if we set that to like 20. Uh, we're going to have uh, a lot faster uh, in that case uh, versus something like a 1 or a 2. And again, if we want, we could turn our blink toggle on and we can have all of this working at the same time. If that's something you wanted for some kind of uh, effect. And just like before, we could also create a toggle for our for this section of our code. So we can say if, and we can have another bool down here. And instead of blink toggle, we'll call it uh, pulsate toggle. We'll say if pulsate toggle, open curly brace, and close our curly braces down here. And there we go. Now we can turn this on and off. So we can have just our blinking with our transparency. We can have just our pulsating with the colors that we want to set up here. So maybe we want to go with a green to yellow. Um, it's a, definitely an interesting value that we got going on here. Uh, but we could go with something like that as well as going with that and our blink toggle. So now we have some more customizability that's built directly into our shader where we can have this pulsa pulsating effect as well as this blinking effect individually or together. And you've learned how to use uh, if statements inside of your shader code to block certain sections off. All right, so that'll do it for this. In a way you've got, you uh, learned about if statements and shaders as well as kind of learned two different shaders at the same time. The pulsate one, it's gonna take all of our code here plus our color the top and color assignment at the bottom and then our blinking is going to take our two lines of code here with our color at the top and color assignment at the bottom and then of course each individual uh, set of uniforms but kind of got two two shaders mashed into one while having some customizability and toggle options all right take care see you in the next one